الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد كثير طيب مبارك فيه والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين إمام المتقين سيد القرى المحجلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه الطيبين الطاهرين My dear brothers and sisters, my dear friends, my dear children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of Islamic Society of North America, I want to express my deepest thanks and gratitude to each one of you. I'm immensely grateful to our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this opportunity to serve this very important and very amazing Islamic organization, the Islamic Society of North America. I'm grateful to all my colleagues at the Majlis, at the Executive Council. I'm indebted to the staff of Islamic Society of North America for their dedication, for their hard work, for their commitment to Islamic work in North America. IFNA is an association of Muslim organizations and individuals that provides a common platform for presenting Islam, supporting Muslim communities, developing educational, social and outreach programs, and fostering good relations with other religious communities and civil and service organizations. During this last two days, we were blessed to have so many guests who came and shared their thoughts and shared their wisdom with all of us. We were very blessed to have Senator Dick Durbin, one of the senior most senators and representing this great state of Illinois. He was our keynote speaker at the inaugural session. We were very blessed to have the Archbishop Joseph Kupik to spend last evening with the leadership of Islamic Society of North America. I'm very honored to welcome our very own Zaki Barjinji from the White House, Rashad Hussain from the Department of Justice, Arsalan Sulaiman from State Department. We are very honored to have today Reverend Jesse Jackson among us. Of course, Mr. Khan and Mr. Azala Khan, so many members representing the different branches of administration, our law enforcement, and people serving our nation. We are very honored to have the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, Mr. Jay Johnson, and other members of the administration. My brothers and sisters, this year's election campaign has been one of the most polarizing campaign that we have seen in recent times. It's very sad and it is very unfortunate that in this great nation of ours, people who are aspiring for the highest office are making insensitive, reckless comments, not only against Muslims, but against minorities, against hard-working individuals, people who strive to do good every single day. I know these comments can be very disheartening, very disappointing, and it might be very painful. But I appeal to each one of you that you counter this irresponsible, insensitive, reckless statements by committing yourself to democracy. I urge each one of you to register to vote and on that election day, we should do our best to make sure that American Muslims 100% contribute and participate in elections. I know Islam is a religious non-profit organization. We don't endorse any political party or any political candidate. But I sincerely urge you, I trust your wisdom. I trust that you will pick the right person to serve our nation for next four years. But the most important message that we have been given since the beginning of this year 
is for each one of you to vote. People before us, especially our African American brothers and sisters, made immense amount of sacrifices so that people who would come later on, people like you and me, would be able to enjoy the blessings of democracy and we would be able to participate in elections and vote. Once Dr. King said, we must not be a segregated nation, but an integrated one. We must not be a nation enslaved to sin of racial discrimination, but a nation where all people are free. My brothers and sisters, while we talk about the challenges that we see over here in our own backyard, I just want to draw your attention for a minute or two to urge you to do your part for our brothers and sisters in Syria. Last year, exactly at this time, we saw that images of Aylan Kurdi at the shores of Turkey. And that picture, that image, changed the hearts of thousands and thousands of people. As a result, many European nations opened up their doors to welcome the Syrian refugees. Exactly after one year, we saw this picture of Umran, who was pulled out of rubble, and his life picture again is reminding us that there are millions of Syrian children who are suffering every single day. Umran became the symbol of those millions of children who are urging us to do something to help our brothers and sisters in Syria. My brothers and sisters, I mentioned this in my khutbah. I mentioned this in the luncheon today that each one of us should do our part to ensure that in our lifetime we will see an independent, free, sovereign Palestinian nation that has been suffering for the last six decades. This oppression should come to an end. And by just chanting slogans or by just protesting, the change is not going to come. Each one of us should do our part if we have contacts, if we have relationships, if we know people who can make a difference. This is the time for all of us to rise and go above and beyond and do our part. This is the need of the hour. This is the need of the hour. I have seen with my own eyes the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. I can very proudly say that I have to an end. We also lend our support to our brothers and sisters in Kashmir who are suffering for the past two months. I know more than 200 young boys and girls are blinded because pellets are shot in their eyes. This form of violence, this form of injustice should come to an end. My dear brothers and sisters, Burma and Rohingya Muslims are our brothers and sisters in faith and in humanity. And I know they don't have large numbers over here. Each one of us should do our part to represent their cause. My dear brothers and sisters, in our own backyard, here in the city of Chicago, in last one year, 2,200 incidents 
achieve greatly. In conclusion, I want to remind myself and to you with this verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us where he says, Islamic Society of North America is your organization. For the past 53 years, this organization is working tirelessly to serve the American Muslim community. In last one year, this organization has been to more than 100 cities across America, taking our programs, taking our events, taking our spiritual conferences, taking our education forums, taking our